You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Real Talk with Lori, with your host, Lori Bowen. Lori is the author of Life Lessons I Learned from My Dog, and she is here to inspire and help you transform yourself with her faith, compassion, and great empathy for others. So now, please welcome the host of Real Talk with Lori, Lori Bowen. Good afternoon. It's November the 2nd, 2018. I'm Lori Bowen, and you're listening to Real Talk with Lori. Thank you for joining me. I'm coming to you from the BBM Global Network, and of course, I'm always live from the Brigadoon Restaurant, a beautiful, fine dining, historical building in Oxford Mills, Ontario. The special today was strips of beef with mushrooms and onions in a red wine au jus served over portobello pasta. And my very special guest who joined me for lunch today can tell you how he thought of it because he had the special. I'm so excited to introduce you to Sid Kratzberg, who's from Ottawa. Thank you for coming out today, Sid. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, Sid is really well known in the Ottawa area. Um, I met him through the Ladies Who Lunch, but Sid has had a very varied career, haven't you? I would say so. Yeah. Yes. So Sid um, actually was a school teacher for how many years? For actually 30. 30 years. 30 years. And he taught out in this area. So I live in North Augusta and he taught at a school just down the road called Algonquin, which is now closed, correct? One of the... 10 schools that I had taught at. Wow. So when you retired from teaching, is that what you did? You retired from teaching? I did. I I had this dream to start a fashion business, which which was fabulous. But before, Mm -hmm. while I was teaching, I was very lucky to become an international motivational speaker. So I became keynote speakers at big American conferences, which was very exciting. I bet. And um, it was really great. And my topic was the real world of education, as Joan Rivers says, let's talk. That was her favorite line. And what I would do is I, I would just show teachers how they could motivate kids through art, music, and literature. And at the time, I worked with uh, one of Simon & Schuster's biggest educational writers, who was the first one to write poems about kids in the class, Lori. Oh. Yeah. Have you heard of Shel Silverstein? Oh, of course. Oh, yay! Yeah. Where the sidewalk never ends. Where the, the sidewalk never ends. Yeah. And she, um, I was a character in her books, so That's it was sweet. quite interesting. I'd love to see those books. What it are was, they called? Where can uh, we get them? If you're not, uh, if you're pl- here, please raise your hand. If you're here, please raise your right. hand. And the goof who invented homework. Uh-huh. That was a funny one. That sounds funny. But, so I, I got involved in education and, and then music education. I always brought in music and uh, it was very exciting because I almost had an educational video made with the new kids on the block at mm, the time. Yes. Because I was called uh, the new Sid on the block. That's so cool. I took their music and I developed whole writing strategies, which was very exciting. Wow. But I had the love of fashion, mm-hmm. and um, I took the gamble, and I said, I am starting this business called Accessories by Sid, and I would do a lot of personal shopping. And 
So this was after you retired. So how that. old were you when you started your own business? I, I was in my 50s. Wow. And awesome. um, it was fabulous. I loved it. And then we're going to be talking about then my eldest came yes. upon me. Yes, yes. So when you were doing, you had a, you sold accessories out of your home. Is that right? I did out of my home and fashion consulting. And then I did uh, fashion shows everywhere. Wow. And uh, it was, I just loved it. And um, then when my illness came, which we'll talk about, I guess. um, Horrible ulcerative colitis. Mm -hmm. So um, I know we're going to share about that right and um after the illness when things were looking good and uh, i went back to the passion of fashion Mm -hmm. and it was very exciting because cbc came to me and i did so many fashion segments for them and um, a lot of my segments were put on the international air canada flights which was awesome that is very exciting and uh I guess out of that became a new career being a, a, how could we say it, a perfume. Yes. I don't want to say connoisseur, but a lover of fragrance. Yes. And the media calling me the aristocrat of scent. Yes. And launching some of the most exclusive fragrances in the world in Canada. It was so exciting, and I'm still doing it. And um, it's just been it's been wonderful. So you've been keeping yourself busy in retirement. You haven't slowed down a I bit. I have not slowed down. But um, I know we want to talk about illness. It could have really yes, affect your life. For more. sure. For sure. Why don't you, um, why don't you carry on with that? What, sure. What, well, what happened when you well, were hospitalized? Well, for me, it was out of the blue. All of a sudden, ulcerative colitis came upon me. And it was... It's a horrible illness, Crohn's colitis, right. and um, you. I was in the hospital. It seemed like every two months you had to go into the hospital to calm your colon down. Mm-hmm. But at the end, it was emergency surgery, or I'd be dead. So I rushed wow. into the hospital. The colon was removed, and lying there for four and a half months. Terrible, terrible. But thank God, uh, I had the best doctor, one of the best specialists, and he's now become a dear friend. And uh, saved your life. Sa- eh? He did save my life. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing I always say is being the only Jewish guy with a saint. <laughs> yes, Doctor Robin Boucher is now Saint Robin to me. What could I tell you? So he was just fabulous, and because of that, I do one of the. Um, I'm very honored that my gala, my fashion gala has been called one of the best in Ottawa, our nation's capital in Canada to our American listeners, if if they're out there. Yes. And um, we raise money for Crohn's and colitis. It's a horrible illness. And, um, you know, it's definitely genetic because our daughter suffers from it. Mm. And my nephew has Crohn's. It, it mm. seems to be rampant. Right, right. And people are talking about it, which is so important. For sure. And one of the biggest TV personalities, I'm sure you knew who Max Keeping was. Yes. And it was actually Max who had similar surgeries to me, but oh. he was even worse off. Oh. And um, I remember one day we were sitting and talking. He said, Sid, Share your story because I was very private with my illness. Right. I've been in the media and national papers, international TV everywhere. Uh, but I never talked about my illness. Mm. I just really kept it privately. Right. And it was Max who said, talk about it, share what's going on. So uh, that's how it all came about. That's amazing. So you do this. How many years have you been doing the Get Citified Gala? The Get Citified Gala every year. For, it's it's going on th- third, third It'll year. be three years now. Okay. Oh, but I did other galas in fashion for the Heart Institute and the Cancer Foundation. So I've actually done five galas. And I'm very proud of the fact out of those five, I've raised over fifty five, sixty thousand dollars 60000 Wow. Yeah. My goal is 100000 You're going to make it. And yeah. we're going to have to take a short commercial break. Hold on to that thought. We'll be right back with the one and only Sid Kratzberg.
Stay tuned. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back. You're listening to Real Talk with Lori. I'm Lori Bowen, your host, and I want to leave you a number. You can call in and add, uh, add si- ask Sid Hatsbard a question. 1-866-451-1451. The phone lines are open. If you'd like to call Sid, ask him about Crohn's and colitis, fashion. He, he does fragrance. Um, so I've been going to Sid's um, Get Certified event for the last three years, and every year, as I did this year, I win a very special hat by Paulette. Oh, yeah. And this year, I won again, and I also won, I believe, one of the clutch purses. Oh, aren't I lucky? Uh, that was a good one. That's a lot of work. You bring some really neat um, vendors to <clears throat> to your show. Can you tell mm-hmm. people what what happens at Get Certified? Yeah, well, what really happened when I had my fashion business and I was doing uh, fashion shows and and doing a lot of work nationally and um, for CBC, our national broadcaster company, and CTV doing segments on air, which I love, my philosophy was... And it still is. Fashion is for everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm 68 years old. And I was very perturbed when I would look in the fashion magazines and see anorexic looking women and even the men. Yeah. And youth. It was quite interesting, Um, especially bridal. That that really bugged me when I would see a 14-year-old or 15 year old in vogue or some magazine doing right. bridal wear yeah. you know they don't even understand the concept mm-hmm. so my philosophy was when i did uh accessories by sid i wanted fashion to be for everyone and my mm-hmm. tv show as well for the mature 50 plus woman <laughs> and that's what i got to be known as one of the first and i'm honored that that's who I promoted. And women of all shapes and sizes. Mm-hmm. It's not the real world. Everybody's zero size two. Exactly. Women are beautiful. doesn't matter if they're size 20, if they're size six. But I felt at the time we weren't showing enough fashion. You're absolutely right. So I really got known as the guy who was trying to bring that to the world of fashion. And even when we do our galas, and you've always noticed I've had models from 24 to 75 year old. It's true. And they're all shapes, yeah. all sizes. So 
hopefully if there's one mission I've accomplished, it's yes. to bring fashion to everyone. Were you, did, were you interested in fashion as a young boy? From day one. Really? Yeah. My mother said it was, I would drive her crazy because <laughs> we'd fight. I want to wear this and that. But I think a lot, of, it's, if you go back and look at our family history, my, my hero at the time was my uncle. Mm -hmm. Fascinating story. Mm -hmm. He had nothing. He fought in the war mm -hmm. uh, against Rommel in the desert. Could you imagine? Wow. And he came back and he used to be a barber, Laurie, mm -hmm. and in Manchester, England. And he would sit and listen to his clients. And they were very wealthy businessmen mm -hmm. who all had stores and fashion business. And he said to himself, I'm just as smart as they are. And he and his wife, it's a fabulous story, it's fascinating, would get up at two in the morning with a bundle of raincoats and they'd go to the markets. Mm -hmm. And in England at the time, there were markets everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they'd sell their raincoats, get on the train and come back. Well, out of that, he, this, my uncle Arnold at the time, Arnold Harris, landed up with 18 women's clothing stores wow. and all around outside of Manchester, Stoke on Trent. Wow. And that's the area where all the pottery is, the Royal Dalton. Oh yes. And he really became known for his fashion and coats. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, it's and I only blood. had the pleasure of meeting him a few times wow. was, you know, he died very, very young, oh. but I, I think, my mom says that's where she thought it came from. Is there anybody else in your family that is like you? In My wife yeah? loves fashion. Our daughter loves fashion. Oh, well, that's perfect. And I always have discussions with people on fashion. You know, mm -hmm. and I, everybody said they like how I put things together in my look. Right. So I've argued with people. There's a big difference, Lori, between style yes. and trend. Right. So a lot of people... If you're following the trends all the time, wow, they have style. Mm -hmm. Style is when you have your own trend and you create your own look. That's you. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because everybody says, oh, my God, I love your glasses, my big glasses yeah. and my big watches. Yeah. And I have many pairs, but I've been wearing this look for 30 years. Yeah, I've never All my those. glasses have always been big and well, I just like unique things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important too. You must yeah. have an eye for color then. Like, are you good yeah, at decorating I love, I, like too? That's very interesting that you said that. No. No? It's a misconception. Really? Well, we just bought a condo, a little condo. Yes. And uh, Leanne Lacroix, who's one of the best decorators, mm -hmm. I, has mm -hmm. done our whole place. Nice. It's different. If I'm with a client... And I'm looking at him or her. I could tell them, buy this for yourself, put this suit together, blah, 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 blah. But it's not the same when you walk into a house and do the whole picture. Right, right. But that's a question everybody that's interesting. asks. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I never knew that. And then I got into the fragrance world, which yes. I absolutely love. And you're still doing that. Oh, I love it. I got my first Burberry from you. I know. At discount. That was, <laughs> oh, that was lucky. That was now, that element. But now we I'm went doing there. Yeah, yes. some of the most fabulous launches in Canada. You know, we're talking just fabulous lines. You know, that's uh, Versace and the world of Bulgari. Mm. So I love doing seminars, as you know, that's the other thing we're doing, Lori. I'm traveling all over, doing workshops for some of our big department stores. Mm -hmm. And I'll example, I'm going to Kingston, Ontario. I'll do a TV show up there, and the next day we'll do a big um, seminar on how to choose your fragrance and help them choose. That's so cool. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. I, I love the media world. I mean, that makes me very happy. I learned all, from you all about spraying it and walking through your fragrance. That's what you do. That's spray you and walk through. Yeah. And I share a lot of tips at the seminars too, you know. So I'm still in that world of fashion, fragrance, but... Um, my next goal, and I was so proud. I did have a TV show, as you know. We're going to get called... to that right after this next break. we got to take a short commercial break. If you're listening to Real Talk with Lori, we'll be right back. 
Stay tuned. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back. I'm Lori Bowen. You're listening to Real Talk with Lori. I have Sid Kratzberg here today, and I'm hoping somebody will call in because this man is a wealth of information. The phone lines are open, 1-866-451-1451. Again, that's 1-866-451-1451. Sid has gone through quite the journey in his recovery from Crohn's and colitis. Um, we're just talking about his fashion and where he's going. So he he does a lot of, uh, you go do a lot of uh, seminars on uh, different fragrances and you work for different companies, right? Like you said, you're going to Kingston this weekend. Off to Kingston for uh, Hudson Bay, Canada. Fabulous. In Canada, everybody knows the Hudson Bay. Yes. So we'll talk. Uh, I'm doing a TV segment up there. And then the next day we have such a fun seminar. That's awesome. On choosing their fragrance and sharing the world of Versace and Bulgari. Wow. Nothing like Italian fragrance, my listeners. If you're going to use a fragrance, Italian and French, really? the best. Yeah. Without sure. a doubt. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So I, I love doing that. You know, so you're 68 years old. 68. Still working. I love still it. Still plugging away. What What's going to, what do you hope to see in the next, so let's say, five years? Where, where do you see I, yourself I wanna, going? Uh, well, I want to continue with my love of fashion. Mm-hmm. Getting asked to be MC a lot of different functions because I love to talk, <laughs> as you can tell. And... Um, my okay. goals, I, I do have something I want to do. I love to talk about fashion, and I do love selling, I have to say. You do. Meeting people from all walks of life, but I do want to do one thing. So if you're out there listening <laughs> and you've got a connection, you call me. I, I want to be on the shopping channel oh, with you, a product you of would be jewelry good at that. or fashion. Oh, you would be good at yeah, that. But it has to be something that I love. Hmm. So if anybody out there has an idea or a gorgeous product for jewelry or fashion, you call us. Yes, one 451 1451 if you have a question for Sid. So, Sid, um, do you want to talk a little bit about what can people do to help with the whole research of Crohn's and colitis? What- right. I think the best thing is become aware of it. Mm-hmm. I am amazed at the number of people that have come up to me and said, Sid, thanks for sharing your story on ulcerative colitis. I suffer from it or I suffer from Crohn's. So continuing to support charities, 
right. particularly the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation in Canada or whatever country, right. so that they could develop new ways to fight it. There's nothing worse than a bowel disorder, yes. you know. We all have to deal with the issue. Right, right. It's not an easy thing to deal no, with. And, no. and depression must be, you were saying earlier that um, a lot of people that end up with Crohn's and or colitis are what you term high achievers. The research has been done on that. Yes. And it, you know, and I'm looking at it, I'm saying, hmm, maybe there's validity to that. I look at people that I know who right. have a disease, and I'm looking at the symptoms and their personal life. They are high achievers. Right. Stress. Well, stress will, I think, affect so many illnesses. It's not just Crohn's and colitis. Sure. It's, oh, my God, you know. Right, right. It just It's a turmoil in people's life. Right. So what are some things that, so obviously lowering your stress level is important. So important. What kinds of things do you do? Do Exercise. Yeah. Or if I feel really stressed, I'll go oh, for Oh, you like to dance. Don't I you? love to dance. I know. You know that. I do. I love that about you. I Most love, men don't like to dance. I, I can't love get to my dance. husband to dance. Oh, no, no. It's, it's terrible. It's, it's, I've always loved Does dancing. Sandy like to dance? Yeah. Oh, it's basically me, so though. Lucky. I tend to be the dad. I love it. You're the extrovert. She's the And it's introvert. really great because I don't have a jealous wife, as you know. She's yes. beautiful. And I'm in yes. a business where you're with beautiful, a lot of women. lovely yeah. women. But it's funny because if we go to events, she says, go have fun. I mean, she'll dance, but it's, you know. She's not as out there as you are. So, She's quieter. So many of my friends will say, dance with my wife, because they hate to dance, right? <laughs> yeah. I feel the music, right? right. <laughs> That's but, um, lovely. So what do you, I had asked you earlier, because you've been married 42 years. 42 years. To Sandy. To Sandy. And you had two things that you think are important in a marriage. What are they? I think not only in a marriage, but in a relationship. Right. This is my opinion, okay? Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, you have to have your own interests. Hmm. I mean, it's great to always be together and do things together, but you really need time to do your thing. Right. So a lot of the things that I like, Sandy, it's not her thing, okay? Right. Because of the type of work I'm in, I go to a lot of galas or a lot of media functions and that's not, she's very low key. I, I guess you would say I'm very extroverted. Okay? Yeah. What the is, other thing. That's, what, can I just ask you, what kinds of things does she like to do that you don't like? Is there anything that she does that you don't like? I bet you like everything. No, we both love to shop. <laughs> Thank God, because I am a shopper, ladies. That's uh, awesome. We both are shoppers. Most men Not don't always like that. to buy, just to look. Yeah, yeah. When you're in the fashion business, you want to see what's out mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. She's a very avid reader, mm -hmm. and it's funny. I, you know what I think it is, because mm -hmm. I've read for so many years as a teacher and studying and and developing courses. Right. It's. I mean, it's great, but it's not something that I sit and read. Yeah, you've done but enough for a lifetime. I've done enough, <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah. But uh, that, that's important to have those different hobbies. And the other thing, if you're listening out there, <laughs> jealousy is not a good thing. Yeah. And I guess I'm lucky because of what I do. I'm... In the fashion world, I'm with models many times. I'm at an events. Yes. That's my life. That's what I do. But it's not healthy out there if one of your partners is a jealous personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A constant jealous personality. Where were you? Where were, were you? you? You're 10 minutes late. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I guess I'm lucky that way. Yeah. But I think. For people listening out there, that is so, so important. It comes back to trust, right? Yeah. You have to trust. And I look at my mother and father, fabulous, married for years, but they did everything together. They shopped together. Mm -hmm. They didn't have their own interests. Right. And that was very hard because when my dad died, my mother's life was done. Right. Yeah. 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 And she died within like five years. Yeah. Died of a broken heart, probably. I think broken heart, but 
you know, their whole world was each other. And I, and I think it's important to develop, to have friends that you both communicate with, yes. but to have separate friends. Absolutely. Well, we'll leave on that note. We have another commercial break. Stay tuned. You're listening to Real Talk with Flory. We'll be right back after the short commercial break. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back. It's Friday, November the 2nd. I'm Lori Bowen, and you're listening to Real Talk with Lori. I'm at the Brigadoon Restaurant, and I'm with Sid Kratzbark, and we're talking all things fashion. It's a gloomy day. It's been gloomy for, what, three or four days, rainy, gloomy. So fashion is something that brightens up our lives, don't you think, Sid? Fashion brightens up your life. It yes. really does. And this is a fabulous season for yes. fashion. Yes, tell us about what's, uh, what's hot, what's not. We're this. seeing a lot of plaids this season. Oh. I love it. I, I love, love it. And, uh, big, the boyfriend coats, they're called the big masculine looking, big uh-huh. flowing coats with plaids and brighter colors we're seeing. Uh, even in the world of makeup, you know, we're mm-hmm. seeing color. Mm -hmm. it's great and fashion is fun it's it's you can have so much fun with fashion and just uh creating your own style yes it's 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 just i think part of my as my wife says it's part of my genetic makeup yes yeah and then there's the the timeless fashion so what are the the there's like maybe Let's say there's five things that every woman should have in their wardrobe, right? Oh, that's a good one. And I have an answer for okay, some of those. Okay, good. I think what's so important is to have certain pieces of clothing that are classic that will last. Right. And I always say every woman should have a good trench coat. Yes, for sure. A good winter coat. Mm-hmm. That could be dressy looking as well. You'll never go wrong with a long black coat. That's true. A good crisp white blouse. Yeah, oh yeah. Because it was Sharon Stone that some of you remembered when she had on a white T-shirt that time at one of the Oscars with a taff for the flowing yes, skirt. Yes, A white blouse will take you everywhere and a good pair of pants. <laughs> Like black a pants. beautiful pair yeah. of black pants or navy, yeah. a monochromatic look, mm-hmm. and the LBD, and you know what that is, the oh. little black dress. Yes, yes. And having an accessory business or working with accessories, that's the one key, ladies. Change the accessories. Oh, yeah. You know, from day to night. 
I used to do a seminar on how to go from work to a cocktail party, and I would give little clues. So I would say, wear a nice pair of black pants, a white crisp blouse, or a little black sweater set, but keep in your drawer <laughs> at work a gorgeous pair of earrings, hmm. you know, a long chandelier earring with an evening bag tucked in the drawer, and a red lipstick, it'll take you anywhere. <laughs> You know where I learned how to do my eyebrows was oh. from one of your guys that you brought to one of your seminars. You know? Oh, the Burberry? Yeah, the yeah, Burberry yeah. one, yeah. When, yeah, Burberry used to be under our company, too. Yeah. That's right. That was a good one. That was. I just ran out. So. Yeah. <laughs> where do you get Burberry? Do you only get it at... Um, at the big malls? At the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They don't sell it at shops. No, <laughs> no. You won't find it there. But that's the other thing I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of seminars for the big drug comp uh, for shoppers. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So that's been very exciting. For the fragrances. Yeah. So I'm going into uh, the shoppers where they bring in 15, 16 clients seated on chairs, and we do a whole fun presentation. People are so excited to hear about the world of Versace. Mm. Tell us about Versace. What do you know? He was a brilliant designer. We all know yes. his ending was tragic. Yes. But what I love about Versace was he loved women and he loved the concept of women being all powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you look at his fragrances, the logo on his bottles, you know who it is. It's Medusa. Oh, yeah. And somebody says, well, who's Medusa? And in the Greek mythology, she was the most gorgeous woman in the world with the most beautiful hair. But she would sit on a rock. So when the sailors in those days would be on the ships and they would look at her, you know what happened. Was she the one that had the snakes coming out her of her Her hair head? would become... <laughs> full of serpents yeah. and you would be turned to stone. Oh, yeah. But it's fascinating why he did that because he wanted to show how powerful a woman can be that she could turn a man into stone. Oh, I kind of So like with that the idea. Me Too movement, it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. He was ahead of himself. He really was. He really was. And then sharing the world of his sister Donatella, mm -hmm. like the story that people just aren't aware of her favorite fragrance is yellow diamond. Do you know why? No. Because he gave her a nine carat yellow diamond Holy. with a cabochon cut. So when you get the bottle, the top of it is a cabochon cut piece of glass on the bottle. Oh, wow. So it shows you what that cut of that diamond looked like. But it's also one of the most beautiful, freshest fragrance. So I love traveling and sharing the world of fragrance. And I think that's the teacher in me. Yes. Everybody has a story. Sure. And I don't care how old you are. Everybody wants to hear a story. For sure. For sure. And you're the storyteller. Uh, well, right? I, I love sharing the stories. Do you, what's your, can you tell us the story of a, a funny time when you were doing one of your seminars or somebody that came up to you or, or maybe at one of your inspirational talks? Do you have any, uh, any funny stories you could share with <coughs> us? Or what is it that people come up and ask you about when you're at these when you're doing well, we always have a question and answer. Right. But it depends what I'm doing a talk on. If it's fragrance, some of the trick. How could I wear fragrance? Yeah. Or That's a good one. What's your philosophy on fragrance? And I always say, ladies, you have more. Or men, well, this is the most fascinating thing. Do you know that the industry of fragrance for men is is becoming, if not as popular as the business for women. Really? Men are getting into fragrance. Right on. It's incredible. That's good. A good smelling it's, man is a good man, right? No. Well, I love that. The, we're finding out that uh, the business is changing. Mm -hmm. And um, I always say to them, you know, you don't have one pair of shoes or one, <laughs> one coat. True. And the fragrance world is the same whether you're a man or a woman. You should change your fragrance. It really is important. It's a seasonal thing. Lighter in the summer, mm -hmm. heavier in the fall. 
but I always love the challenge of somebody who says I've used the same fragrance and I'm not Chanel changing. number five, and that's Which, all they use. Yeah. That's all they use. Yeah. You know? Okay, well, hold that thought. We'll be back after this short commercial break. You're listening to Real Talk with Lori. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Leip's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Real Talk with Lori, and I'm Lori Bowen. I'm having a fascinating conversation with Sid Kratzberg. He's a, a really, really well-known man in Ottawa, aren't you? He's the only male. Now, tell us a little bit about how this came about. So there's a, I've talked about this uh, before on the show, and I've had Catherine Landry on. Uh, Ladies Who Lunch in Ottawa started off with maybe two dozen women, and it's grown to over 20,000 women in business. And Sid is the only male that's allowed to come to our events. How the heck did that happen, Sid? Uh, actually, there's a few. There's two or three now. Which no, is, you're the it, first uh, one. It was... I, Catherine Laundry, who's I just think brilliant marketeer, and uh, started this ladies who lunch. Mm-hmm. And um, her first one, my, my boss called me and said, "Oh, just to go and set up a little table with fragrance and samples." And I guess when I got there, Catherine, perhaps you know, there was a lot going on, and mm-hmm. her first event, and you know, wants to make sure everything's good. So I just walked around and made sure everybody was happy and did a little, little talk on fragrance and people had a good time. And Catherine, who I adore said, you're coming to everyone now. So that's the story behind that. But it's fabulous that, you know, from 15, 20 people to over 20,000. I know. It's one of the best networking things in the nation's capital here. Um, Sure. It's just uh, to have bright, smart, creative uh, women networking. It's so important, you know. And I have to say, I've been to a lot of the male networking ones. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah, if you want to sit and get drunk for an evening, fine. But that's not my style. Yeah. I think that the guys could learn a lesson how to create these events. Let that's me tell cool. you. Let me tell you. Right on. That's good. I think it's really neat. Now, you know, women are known for being competitive and a little bit catty. But a lot of people in – one of the thing, reasons why Catherine started it was she wanted to prove that women could work together. Has there, have you had that experience of women? Do you work like you seem to get along well with women, right? I love women. You, you have I, I, problems ne- getting in between two women or anything? No, but I, I, I think, and I, I, I don't want everybody sending hate mail, <laughs> 
but it's um I've worked with women mm -hmm. where I am particularly in education you may be the only male and other type of careers right yes there's a cattiness there yes you're right I, I'm I'm sorry to say it you know a cattiness and what, how would you describe that so is it kind of, do you think it's because um we compete quite a bit I think we compare ourselves I to each think other that has a lot to do with it and we need to stop that you hey? need to stop oh, that you, girls you need to stop that it's not something you'll find amongst men a lot I know, I like know. at a you know i've been in situations where everybody's nice in the moment somebody gets out from the table then it starts yes you know right it, it's it's not a good thing no but i'm not saying everybody's like no that. no no, sure. no but, but we're kind of known for that yeah and ladies who lunch i think they're really good at it they're trying to yes. help each other yes and support each other so it, it, it's it's kind of trying to change the whole trying to idea. change the whole thing yeah but um no, I, it's been so much fun for me, as particularly with my TV show that I had the honor of doing. Are you not doing guess, it anymore? You were maybe doing in the fall. Oh, I'm cool. just waiting to hear. Okay. I mean, in, um, in the spring, in sorry. In the spring, yeah. I'm just waiting to hear. But it was very exciting because not only were you the host, but you were also the producer. Oh. So I had to plan how did I want each segment to be. Wow. It's a lot so of work, I, eh? It was a lot of work, but it was it was really well done, you know. So and getting was this something, a fashion show? or? It was just called Get Citified on a lot of the big galas. I, I remember one of the shows I did was at the American Embassy. I, uh, it was the 4th of July, which wow. is a very big event in yes. the U.S., obviously, but where the ambassador has a very big party in Ottawa. So I did a whole show on that and some of the big galas and just, you know, on, on some of the... Um, is it kind of like being on the red carpet kind of idea? Yeah. Oh, okay, and I get And then the it. Governor General's Awards I've done. You're perfect for that. I, I can I see love you on it. the red carpet I, I, interviewing I people. I love doing that and talking about fashion and just talking to people in general. So that would be another thing I, I'd love to consider. Besides the shopping channel. Yeah. A talk show. A talk show. But with very interesting Canadian personalities. Mm, who would be one of your guests? Who would you like to get on there? What, who, like, what kinds of... I often thought I wish I could be Oprah. Oh, me too. Because there's there's two people I would kill to talk to. Oprah is one. Uh, no. No? No. I'd like to be like Oprah. Oh, be I'm, like Oprah. Yeah, to oh, have a I show where you can get all the guests. <laughs> yes, okay. I love Oprah. She's yeah, fabulous. so do I. I'd but love to meet her. <clears throat> I would love to interview Barbara Streisand. Oh, that would oh be Oh, my awesome. God. I love her. Did love you her. see on uh, Facebook there's a she I saw it with last James night. Corbett? I stayed up to watch that. that was oh, funny, my eh? God. It was beautiful. She's gorgeous. And the other one I would have loved to have had the pleasure of talking. So if anybody's out there, it's Michelle Obama. Oh, you're right. You know, I just, I love that woman. So I, I, I And I, I don't want to... Not so much from the political aspect. I just thought she's smart. She's so bright, intelligent, and and respectful. And, yes. and it, I can go on and on and on. I, I just admired her. I, know, I agree. Yeah. As, a, as a, a woman, I would love to, to really be able to sit down and talk to. Yeah. And... Um, Something she said that's always stuck with yeah, me yeah. is when they go low, we go high. We go high. Yeah. yeah. So when people are, are being negative and trying to drag you down, instead of kind of going to their to their level and, you know, bad mouthing them, you, you go above them and yeah. you just keep doing positive stuff. That's right? what you gotta do. But that's something I should look at. That would be really good, doing a, a talk show in Canada with with a lot women of, yeah, that women. have made such a difference. The one woman I would love to speak to in, um, as a Canadian mm -hmm. would be, because I just think she's fabulous, is Lisa Laflamme. Oh, yes. A national news CTV yes, yes. lover. Yes, Just yes, lover. Yes. We have a... 
We have a lot of great women. I have been trying to get Margaret Trudeau to come on um, because she has bipolar. It would be fascinating to talk to her. I've read a couple of her books, but uh, we have to take another short commercial break. We'll be right back. We're talking with Sid Kratzberg, and he would like some new speaking engagement right. stay tuned and call us yes 1-866-451-1451 patricia fayweather harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources she's written a five-part book series for all ages called rock with rodney and party with perky to preserve wildlife which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Welcome back. You're listening to Real Talk with Lori. I'm on the BBM Global Network. We only have a few minutes left if you'd like to call in and ask Sid a question, 1-866-451-1451. One of the things that I really admire about you, Sid, is that even though you're pushing 70, you're still so active. And that's really important. You know, once you retire, you, it doesn't mean you just sit at home and watch the soaps, Right. That's for sure. Are you enjoying retirement, or did you? I I, I don't think I've retired. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. Well, you retired from I, your I from your main the job, be, main job, and the then best, now you're an entrepreneur. The best thing is I work when I still have to work. I mean, financially, mm-hmm. it helps. But the best thing is working when you want to work. Yes. and that's the key. Yes, and for the, sure. And the second key is. I think when you retire, you have to find something that you're passionate about. Yes. And whether it's volunteering, whatever the scenario, whatever the case may be, I think if you have a passion for something and you follow it, it will make retirement a lot easier. So your passion was children because you were a school teacher and then you switched over because you've always had a passion for fashion. fashion. Were you were you the fashion guy at school too? Like you wore your your colorful suits and stuff when you were a teacher? Like I, I always I always wore a tie and shirt. Did you? Yes. And were I, they colorful? I, I've sat, yes. <laughs> and it's really funny because you'd be sitting there and primary kids notice everything, <laughs> yes. you know. Yeah. But I I just believe that I think we become too casual today. You're right. And casual Friday that's thrown out there is a little too casual. Yeah, yeah. You're you know? right. You know, I, there's something about getting dressed up that makes you well, feel I special. Well, I think that's why I love my gala. And that's what everybody says. It's so nice to dress up for your big it's gala. True. One night, you know, it's so great to see my husband in the suit or yeah. partner, whomever he may be, a, or a woman. It yes. gives me an opportunity to dress up. Yes. You know, I always joke that I go to Ottawa just to see the fashion because there's no fashion out here. I know. 
A lot of people it's, don't dress up in the country. Well, so as you're as you're moving forward, if somebody wanted, I know you'd like to do more of the speaking engagements, the um, motivational or or hosting events. How do people get in touch with you? How do they find right, you? Right, all they'd have to do is go to getcertified.ca. Get certified.ca so you have your own website I do and if there's anybody out there I'm telling you if you've got uh, something that you feel wow I need somebody to go on air and talk about it do call me yes (laughs) no it's just it's life is good Mm -hmm. you know I hope everybody's finding something in their life that brings purpose that brings meaning and just be thankful you're around. Yes, for sure. And keep mm-hmm. keep being busy, right? Keep busy and, and help you try and stay positive. Yeah. And the one thing, if I may leave you with a word of advice that I've learned, negativity will bring you down. So mm-hmm. in your social relationships, try and find somebody who's upbeat. Yes, that would be you. Well. For sure. And I mean, then I'm when sure you have you- those days that we all go through, me too. What do you do when you're down? What Stay at you? home. Yeah. Don't don't be out there bringing yeah. your negativity or your bad days. We all have them. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Take like, care of yourself. The That's next, my advice. Next day, get up and the keep going. The next day, get up and just, I used to say, it's better to be above the grass than below. <laughs> right? That's true. Right. And never, ever stop. Stop dancing. And never stop dancing. Have you gone to the salsa dances that are at the no, city hall? No, I, I need to try that I one. I want it. It's every Friday through the summer, eh? They, they dance outside at City Hall in Ottawa. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It was I my pleasure. you coming all the way out here and it having lunch great. with me. It was great. I enjoyed our I B- did too. BBM Global, Global Network. Network. Yes. And... Uh, I just hope that everything goes well for you and that you get some more speaking gigs. Yeah, you never know. You never never know. know. And I always say, peace and love. Peace out. Shalom. You You got it. (laughs) Thanks for joining me. I'll be back next week, same time, same station. You're listening to Real Talk with Lori, and I'm Lori Bowen, your host. You've been listening to Real Talk with Lori. Come join the conversation each week right here with Lori Bowen on Real Talk with Lori. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.